The biggest challenge new traders have is they start to see the same thing and they get overconfident. So what happens is you start to see the same opportunities and it's like the market is, uh, you know, the story of Hansel and Gretel, right? You have that old lady that's trying to bait you with like the breadcrumbs and the, and the candy and stuff. And that's what the market does. The market baits you and you'll have a week of winning trades and you'll say, man, trading's easy. I, I don't even know why. I don't know why everyone isn't trading. And then the next week, the market shifts a bit in terms of structure and you don't have experience with that structure and you start trying to apply the same ideas that you applied your winning week to the next week and you lose all your trades and then suddenly now you feel as though you're lost on, on top of that you've increased your risk because you did so well the week before, you're like, well, hey, I don't need to really worry too much about risk management because I was banging out these trades left and right. And man, imagine if I had a single lot on this or I had a 10 lot on this, man, I would have made like, you know, 10 grand, 100 grand last week. So I'm going to come out banging hard on the following week. And when that doesn't happen, that crushes your, men your mental state. It crushes your confidence. But what you didn't realize is the market adjusted and you didn't adjust. So 100%. as a new trader, I, I hear this all the time. I guarantee you there's 90% of people in in this gulag, in the YouTube chat, <laughs> that I'm resonating with 100%. I know I am because they're all sitting there going, how does Ted know my trading history? It's because you're not seasoned enough to see the different structures the market takes. The market can range for an entire week and you don't even realize it's ranging. You're just like, well, I keep getting stopped out. It's stupid, the market's doing it. And you won't recognize when the market's trending. So as you gain more experience, it's like today, Raja turned around and said, today's a no trading day. There's still people that are making money, 100%. There's people making money on buys, there's people making money on sells. But as you become more comfortable as a trader, you start to understand where are the best opportunities for my trading style and it's not going to be every day. It might not be every week, but you have to get comfortable with that. And new traders don't want to accept that. They don't want to accept that for a week, you might not find a trade because you start to fear that you don't know what you're doing. And it's not that you fear you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You just don't want to accept the fact that it's not going to happen every day. If I, if I opened up a therapy session, like if, <laughs> if I had like a, like a Dr. Ted and you came on and like you just told me your thoughts, I get that all the time. I have people that are like just destroyed mentally. And it's because they don't, they don't want to accept that they're chasing money. Exactly. Uh, they don't want to accept that when they have trades in profit, they don't want to take the profit. They want to let it go a little bit more. It's, and, and, and it's a vicious cycle because what happens is, and I know this is what happens with a lot of people because I witnessed it. Someone opens up an account. They've got $500, right? So, you know, you start off really great, right? You go from $500 to $550. You got proper risk management. You're doing one trade a day. Everything's working out, right? And now suddenly you're on your way to the Lambo, right? Because you're like, okay, if I make $50 this week, next week I'm going to make $150. Then I'm going to make $300. Then I'm going to make $1,000. Then I'm going to make $5,000. I'm going to keep adding, right? Because in your head, you've already gone through the steps of how this trading journey is going to go. And... You make your five hundred. You make your fifty dollars the first week. You you wake up on Saturday morning. You feel like you're the king or the queen of the world, right? Because all week you had proper discipline. All your trades went accordingly. Um, you know you lost maybe a couple of trades, but your risk management was on point because you had that brand new fifty dollar account. So you were excited. So then Sunday rolls around and it's one o'clock in the afternoon or whatever it is, like two hours before market open, you're excited. You're planning your charts out for the week. You've got like your all your, your pair that you're working on. You're like, okay, this is what's gonna happen. Right away, as soon as the market opens, you say to yourself, hey, okay, the market just opened, I'm not taking a trade yet. But then you see the market move and you're like, oh man, it's happening. My analysis is happening right now. I need to get in. And you get in and then the market shifts. You take a loss. You're like, okay, well, that was silly. I know not to trade the market open. I shouldn't have done that. And then you wait till Monday rolls around and you start seeing the same idea again. And you're like, oh, okay, I got to get in, get in. 
you take another loss. You're like, okay, this isn't good. Like I've taken two losses on my analysis and it's only Monday. And then what happens is you start thinking to yourself, oh man, I'm on the streams with Ted or, or Rakil or Monty, or, you know, I'm, I'm talking to Daniel, I'm talking to whoever, man, these guys are going to be judging me now because I took two losses and I went against their rules. And, you know, last week I did really well and I was telling them how good I did. And now this week I'm not doing anything. And, oh man, I got to catch that back up. So now what do you do? You take your next trade and it's running really well. And your, your normal take profit is 15 or 20 pips. And what do you do? It's now 25 pips in profit. And you're like, okay, perfect. This trade is going to make all my money back that I lost the last two trades. So I'm going to let it run. And you know what happens? It pulls all the way back to break even. And you, and you take like just one pip and you had 25 pips in profit. Now you're really messed in the head because you took three trades. You had two losers. You had one that was going to win most of your money back and it was actually properly done. But because you wanted to win all your money back on that one trade, now you didn't win anything. So now you're back to the two losing trades and one break even trade. So now you're going into Tuesday and now you're really messed in the head because now you're just looking for a trade. And that's when the spiral begins and your $550, your $50 profit goes to $25 in profit, goes to $15 in profit, goes to $5 in profit. Now you're into 490s, then you go to 470s. Now you take a big loss because you up your lot size. Now you're down to 400 and it just, in one week you lose $300 because you just cycled into that despair instead of just maintaining focus and maintaining that discipline. And that's the reason why you need to really sit down, take your time and enjoy the ride. Because I see it happen to people all the time and they chase and you chase money and now you've lost a $500 deposit and now you deposit another $500. And now the only thing that's on your mind is that you lost the $500 from the week before. So now you need to make that $500 back and then the chase begins again. You start off perfectly, you know, you make your $50 in that week. You're like, hey, I'm going back to my discipline rules. I can do this. You know, I see everybody do this every day on the streams and on the Instagram, on YouTube, wherever I'm looking, I see people are doing this. Why can't I? And the cycle repeats and it keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. Not because anyone's influencing you. It's because you think that you need to be doing the same thing every single day when the same conditions don't happen every day. Let's say, for example, in trading, the average person can lose seven trades in a row and be sad as hell about it. But they win one trade, not even make back 30 percent of what they lost. And guess what? They forgot about the seven trades. Oh, yeah. 100 percent. They forgot about it. So now what are they thinking? They're thinking, oh, OK, yeah, yeah, we won. OK, cool. Now we're back in the thing. Yeah, man, people need to understand, man, greed and ego kills in these markets, man. We're, we're nobody to be greedy and, you know, and have an ego in these markets. You know what I'm saying? There are people out there trading billions, you know, like people. We're just yeah. a little fish, you know, we need to yeah, get a little, I think it, it, it a little is true. I mean, snacks I mean, in here. I, 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 I <laughs> feel bad for people because it, like it's funny. I'm reading the YouTube chat and everyone's like, that's me. That's me. I, I know it's you. I, I, I know it's you because it's I know all of us. I know what traders have gone through, right? You're going to take trades just to prove to yourself that you were right and you're going to lose. And you'd be like, yeah, I shouldn't have taken that trade. I knew that we were in a ranging market, but you know what? Your ego basically told you to take a trade to see if you can beat the market instead of taking a step back and realizing, hey, we're in a ranging market. I'll come back in a couple of days. We'll get a trending market again and I'll be fine. But I guarantee you do that. Yeah, everybody, everybody does that when they're a new trader. Stop doing that. Pull yourself back and realize you're confident because you traded in a particular session or a particular way when the market conditions matched with your ideas and get used to that. Some days the market conditions won't be there. Take a break. It's OK. They will come back. I guarantee it. We've been doing this too long. I've been now six years doing this. The market conditions always come back to your optimal trade. It will always come back. And just really remember that. And that's like a that's also like a big thing a lot of new traders uh, start to struggle with because you know they'll get a whole week and a half of a trending market where they're just yeah. catching all these moves. The market is trending. You know, let's say we're we're on a down channel, right? And market is trending down. You're catching all these pips for a whole entire week. You feel you know you let your ego get to you. 
right? Yep. Now you feel like you're the best trader on the planet. So what do you do? You up your lot sizes. You do this, you get overconfidence, you get over cocky, you know, oh, wow, I can maybe afford a Lamborghini one day out. Yeah, you know, the uh, trading is finally hitting me. And then what happens? And you have a week where you start to range within a week and you're getting stopped out, just like how you were saying. And I was like, dude, like, it makes total sense because, you know, you know, we, we've all been there. We've all been there. And you just how you were saying earlier with the, uh, okay, you know, I could have maybe, oh, I would have made this money if I put 10 lots. You know what I'm saying? Like you start to think of all these profits that you could have been making when, you know, you're only risking like this amount. You're not used to towing this money lots. You know, you're, you're let's say That's you're right. throwing standards and then you're like, oh, I could have made 10,000 if I would have threw a 10 lot. No, you, you can't think like that. And that's that's not how you get that's not how that's not how it's supposed to work you know my my best streaks my best trading months have been the months where i'll have a really good trading you know day and then the day after i'm just gonna lower my lot size you know what i'm saying you know raja just made a hundred thousand dollars last month and now he lowered his lot size you know like the best the best trades i've ever had is you know i've had a good day and i'm gonna lower i'm gonna lower the risk of a trade after you know because psychologically it's gonna help you you know you know, you're lowering your risk, you're lowering your lots. So guess what? You're you're not for you're not your brain is not telling you, Daniel, you need to get in over leverage and make a lot more money. No, you're lowering your lot size. So guess what? You're gonna think more more clearly and then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be more on the charts, like, okay, you know what? No. Oh no. You know what? Today's no trading day. We don't need to trade today. No trade is no loss. Simple. The other thing is too, a lot oh, of people damn. are worried about missing their trade and not realizing that you're going to have lots of opportunities to take trades. Um, and as a new trader, you think because you've done one set of analysis that if you don't catch this trade, then you've missed out on something big and you haven't, as you grow as a trader, you're going to see moves happen all the time. Like gold dumped from like what, 2047 all the way down to like 1980 or 1970 or whatever. I missed that whole move. I caught the other move on the way up, right? Like I missed huge moves with gold and then I finally caught one. It, it didn't bother me that I missed those other big moves. I was more satisfied with the fact with the move that I actually caught um, and I was comfortable with that, but I knew I would catch it eventually. And that's what you have to remain focused with as a trader is you'll see all these moves happen day to day. Don't be discouraged that you missed them. Be excited that they're happening because that means that they're gonna happen again. Uh, and you have to put yourself in that mindset of be excited that these moves are going to happen on on a weekly or monthly basis because you just have to wait your turn and you'll get your turn. You'll get your big move that you wanted. So don't get upset when you see it happening. Get excited. I'd be more upset if the market was ranging for a month and we had nothing. But when you see high volatility and big moves happen, you know, uh, 50, 100, 200 pips, that's great because you know that's going to happen again. So you really need to sit back and say, hey, I saw this move happen. I missed it, but that means that I know it's going to happen again. And I just have to plan that out accordingly. And you can miss it 10 times in a row. You can miss the next six months of moves. And then six months later, you catch everything else. Um, you know, back in 2018, I think it was the middle of 2018, uh, Monty, Chris, uh, you know, trade with Monty and myself, we were missing gold trades every which way they were moving 50 100 pips with gold in 2019 we grabbed the majority of those big moves we destroyed those big moves because all for the last six months of 2018 we kept seeing the same thing happen over and over again and we were both messaging each other saying man did you see that happen and we we're like yeah it's like why didn't we catch that it's like well we didn't plan it properly so then in 2019 when it started happening we planned it executed and we hit hard so don't don't get discouraged. Look at it as an opportunity. To yeah, that's kind of what I'm going through right now. I um, past couple of months I've been missing trades left and right, but I I've been calling them right, and now I'm finally executing on them. Yep. It just you know you just keep planning these trades out, and you keep uh, going back in the journal and see how you could have caught the past trade for the past session. But that's yeah. how you get better. You're, it you're, is. It is. Um, you know, and and you, if if you guys, if some of the people are on the on the trade with Monty stream, um, if you guys are on the London stream with him, 
I mean, you just have to ask them. We were trading gold like fiends, both of us, and we were missing moves, getting stopped out. Like it would rock it up 40 pips and then pull back all the way to stop loss every single time. And, you know, we'd, we'd stop in profits of like five pips or 10 pips or whatever it would be. And, sure. you know, we just kept hitting it. And then eventually we got the big moves that we were looking for, but we didn't waver. We didn't get upset. It was just, it, it became a little bit funny on the sense that we were seeing it happen. We were just, we were, we just weren't catching it. And then when we started catching it, that's when, you know, the, the hard work previously paid off. So mm. really focus on that aspect of it. It's the same thing with GJ too. You know, you'll miss big moves on GJ, but when you catch them, you're yeah. going to catch monsters. I think you guys talking about these past experiences really help a lot of traders. Like, you know, I've, I've heard you talk about missing all those Brexit moves last year, the year before. And that would stay in my mind when I was missing all these trades in GJ past maybe four or five months. And now it's just, you know, it's almost automatic where you're just executing and you're seeing these and you're like, oh, I've seen that before. Yep. But you, you guys talking about that really helps a lot of people. 